Hey, science, is it really you? I didn't recognise you without your white coat. Where are you off to? Oh, hello, society. Please do excuse me, but I'm in a bit of a hurry. I'm on my way to an international symposium in China. We're going to discuss the construction of a new particle accelerator. Another one? Didn't you set one up a little while ago, in Geneva? The famous experiment in which the Earth was to disappear down a black hole. Except there wasn't really a black hole, was there? Nothing escapes you, does it, society? But you know, the black hole was the usual media hype. And remember, traffic to the Physics Institute's website broke all records at the time. Well, they will have been interested too, because it brought a lot of publicity. I remember reading an interview with that famous physicist. Oh, what's his name? You know what I mean, right? But tell me about this new accelerator. What's it for, exactly? What's it for? It's used for experiments with neutrons that help us to understand the nature of certain matter better, with extremely important theoretical implications and applications. Are you sure? Well, it's not exactly black or white. It's more grey. But why am I wasting my time explaining things to you? You don't listen to me. You don't understand me. You've never understood me. And you have a zero tolerance for risk and you don't want to know about uncertainties. We've known each other for 400 years and our relationship isn't getting any better. At least I have the courage to admit it. You're not really interested in me. And if you're honest, you're also a little bit afraid of me aren't you? Afraid? The reality is that I have to perform great human feats just to balance the books. I'd like to see you paying for health, education, social security. And it's not true that I don't spend money on research, because I do. I know, I know. But you must understand that the money you spend on me is money well spent. I bring innovation development, jobs, technology. Listen, society, just as an example, I've helped to reduce the number of human salmonella cases in the EU in the past five years by almost 50%. That's not nothing, you know. Years, research, experiments. Things are never quick and easy with you, are they, science? It's been more than 30 years since you told me you're about to find a cure for cancer. And more than 20 since you asked me for money to produce an AIDS vaccine. And where are the results? Do you think this is easy? Why don't we talk about the fact that every time I come up with an innovative proposal, you block it? I block it? When? What about GMOs? How are we going to feed our animals without access to GM soya? That old story of modified rice that not even pests will eat. Well, excuse me for saying so, but if the pests won't eat it, why should I? Well, you're the sensible one. Does that seem sensible to you? Try to understand what I'm saying. What if it turns out that GMOs destroy farming? Is farming to be handed over to multinational companies? And who's paying for this research anyway? What are their motivations? Think twice about it before you change what I eat. Science, have you really considered all the implications? Should it really be up to you to decide? And how can I have my say? Have I considered the implications? Society, please, with all the other things I have to do. So let's talk about asbestos. You told me it was the safest material around, remember? You even had me using it in school buildings. And then it turned out that it was carcinogenic. You're quite right. But who discovered that asbestos is carcinogenic? I did. OK, OK. But... 
Oh, come on, enough. I've been listening to you two arguing for ages. It sounds like we all have the best intentions at heart. Isn't there a way we can accept our differences and work together?